Thank you, Let's sweetheart. talk about what uh, what else you're wanting. Are you dating? Yeah. <sighs> How's it going? I, I'm wanting to date. Yeah. I just, yeah. it's limited resources out there, right? <laughs> and what are you so, looking for at this stage, this point? A partner. Yeah. And I'm, when I say a partner, I want someone that's going to be fun. Yeah. That's not intimidated by who and what I am. Yes. Yeah. Um, that likes to travel. Yeah. Going to let me go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I feel like you just spoke it into existence. I now. hope so, girlfriend. I feel like you so just spoke you got, it. And I'm taking applications. Oh, you so know, you got I, a friend. Okay. I'm okay. Good. We'll keep, we'll be all, we'll and be I don't discriminate. Hunt. He can be, yeah, I'm not against different nationalities. <laughs> and you know that too. Guys, <laughs> Vivica's going to stick Vivica. around. She's laying down the wall. We got some hot top. She hit the wall and it hurts. And the thing I'm responding to in this video is the and it hurts part. Because oftentimes when these conversations come up, there's a lot that's not said. And so what I would like to do is talk about why it hurts. Um, the thing about Vivica Fox, at 60, she actually looks pretty good. Uh, she looks better than a lot of 60-year-old uh, women. And truth be told, there are men who want to date her. But these men are probably 70. <laughs> and what's what she didn't say is that the kind of man that she's looking for, the kind of man that Vivica Fox wants, that man is looking for a different kind of woman. Perhaps a woman who is more traditional, a woman who's uh, not as busy, not as booked and busy, right? Uh, and so the partnership that she's seeking, it's not that she can't get it, but she tends to date younger. I mean, her she has a pattern of dating younger men. So the question is, does a younger man want a 60-year-old woman? Now, another part of this that people forget is that, you know, Vivica Fox, of course, at one point was highly sought after. She was engaged. Uh, no, she wasn't engaged. 50 Cent almost proposed to her. You said at one point he was going to propose and he yes. had a, a 14 carat ring? 12. 12. Yes. Still a crazy ring. Yeah. What is that? But he's 50 cent. Two million dollar ring or something like that? Something like I that? I don't know. But he got mad at me and turned it into a pair of earrings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found that out later. Yeah, found that out later. I was like, damn, B. You could have had, had the ring. Damn. You could have had I at least could have turned it into a pair of earrings if we broke up. There's this thing that happens, and you guys know I've talked about the invisible black woman. There's this thing that happens, and even for me, I sometimes forget that I'm in my early 40s, and so when people ask me my age, I kind of will have to think, <laughs> because in my mind, for some reason, uh, mentally I'm still in my late 30s. And so I think with Vivica Fox, my suspicion, is that although she is 60 mentally i don't i don't think her mind has caught up to her her body you know i don't think her mind has ca caught up to uh where she's at biologically and physically and so in her tone when she was speaking about wanting a partner at 60 what was not conveyed was humility and there's a particular kind of humility that, you know, as you get older, you, you, you should have because you, you realize that con contrary to what people say, age is not just a number. Age is a representation of where you are mentally and physically. Age means like saying you're 45 versus 25 that means that you probably are less malleable. You have perhaps stronger boundaries. You know, it might be easier for someone to get over on or take advantage of someone who's younger. Um, that younger person might be more likely to um, be a little bit more cooperative, less stuck in their ways. You know, willing the younger person willing to bend 
in, in ways that the person who's a little older might not feel like doing. And so age matters. And this is not just as it relates to um, relationships, but also as it relates to career. We all know the person that gets hired and the person in the office who's younger and how they move versus the person who's older, more mature, who's, <laughs> you know, logging on at nine and logging off at five, as opposed to the 22 year old who's, you know, willing to stay till nine, 10 o'clock at night, that kind of thing. So age is, um, the whole phrase of, you know, age is nothing but a number. It's more than that. It does mean something. And when any man hears 60, it's not just the age, but it's 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 also the uh, mentality, you know, the sort of uh, ways in which that's 60 years of patterns and behaviors and habits. <laughs> and but I want to talk about why, why does it hurt, you know? And this is where I come in with my invisible black woman rhetoric. And the invisible black woman, I mean, I can take this in a number of different directions, but one of the things you'll hear all women, not just black women talk about is as a woman ages, she becomes more invisible in society because she, as she ages, loses uh, beauty in terms of, you know, obviously not not inner beauty but our bodies begin to break down and because of the way our society is set up with beauty being uh, a huge commodity for women and, and one that women often exploit for most of their life right even a, even average women you know i mean i think an average woman can make herself more desirable this is where the BBLs come in. This is where all the, the surgery and the makeup and the lashes this is where all of that comes in is even as an average woman, there are ways that average women believe that they are they can become more desirable if they do those different things. So now what you have is as you as you age is like a situation where no matter what you do, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what lashes you put on or how much makeup you wear or like you know i mean there's things you can do like obviously diet and exercise but by and large at some point people can tell that you're older and there's no way around it even if you get surgery even if you get a facelift it's like people can still tell and so where where we're at where i think vivica fox is at is at that place where you know okay because when she was dating 50 cent a lot of people may not know, but she was 40 and he was like 28. And she looked amazing. I mean, she looked great. She did not look 40, right? So she was able to kind of, Vivica Fox was able to get away with, you know, kind of extending her, uh, so to speak, market value, if you will, extending that for a while, you know, because she, she looked really, really good. And, and just a sidebar, I think, you know, this is alleged, but it seems as though she actually probably could look younger. It appears that she's probably that like messing with facial fillers, which a lot of women are doing as they age nowadays. And I think the filler can sometimes age women. So anyway, that's just, I think her face is, she's kind of messing with her face. <laughs> she needs to stop doing that. But, um, so the invisible woman, right? So why I'm bringing this up? is because again Vivica Fox in her in her statement in terms of what she articulated it did not sound as though her brain has caught up to her body and her and her physical and and the reality of her being 60 now you can say well that's a good thing but the problem is that this is where unrealistic expectations come in and anytime i talk about unrealistic expectations people are like well what do you mean and this is what I mean, is that at some point you have to be willing to accept the fact that you you, you probably are going to have to settle um, for maybe not the richest guy, maybe not the youngest guy. And in her tone, 
she very much still sounds the way she did when she was dating 50 Cent. Like, like in her mind, it seems like she thinks that a guy like that, 50 Cent, who's now I think 48, would be interested. And maybe he would be, but I think the chances are low. So I think what, you know, what's important is for us as, as black women to be aware of where we stand on the social hierarchy because the social hierarchy is real um and even me you know if you are a plus size woman if you are um if there's something about you that may not be the quote standard of beauty well there is a community of of men or of people that will be interested in you but you have to find that community and i think this goes back to kevin samuels when plus size women this is an example will call in or when women who are significantly older will call in and have these expectations it's like well it, it, you know and, and it's not about dating down it's, it's about understanding your social position and this is a very uncomfortable Thing to talk about right because nobody wants to admit that this is a thing <laughs> nobody wants to admit that this is a thing you know that the way you look matters and it determines who you attract it you know you could be attracted to whoever you want but based on how you look your age your weight um various other factors it, it will determine who you get <laughs> right and and, and it, the power i want to talk about beauty as power because the reality is beauty is power it is a temporary power it expires it does have an expiration date <laughs> so there's that but the power is understanding who are you beautiful to? Who are you beautiful to? You're not gonna be beautiful to everybody. And that's fine. You know, like for me, I realized that my value in terms of who seemed to, to value me, even though I'm college educated, I have a master's degree, those, it, for the most part, the guys that seem to, for the, for most of my life, express genuine interest, okay, not fake interest, but genuine interest. A lot of those guys, um, if they were college educated, oftentimes they were African, like from the, the continent or maybe whatever, first, second generation or something like that. But having some connection to Africa and, and by that having maybe different beauty standards or uh, uh, blue collar men and that was just where I realized where my value was, was you know and it doesn't mean that I can't get anybody else but it was just what I observed and it, and it, and it meant something to me right and it so what I'm saying here let's go back to Vivica Fox Vivica you're 60 that's fine you actually don't look bad I mean if you stop messing with the facial fillers <laughs> you can you can even look better uh, but it's where figuring out her, her challenge is going to be to figure out in terms of where is she going to be most valued? And I don't think it's fair to say, I mean, the internet has been saying, oh, you know, whatever, she needs to just hang it up. She's hit the wall, you know, and she's post wall actually, you know, hang it up, let it go, Vivica. No, I think that she can find a quote partner, but like. Is pro the guy's probably going to be like 70 <laughs> you know or or something like that right i mean just be realistic about what kind of partner you're trying to find this is another curated legacy production and i am here to make the invisible visible about modern black women i highlight the things that black women didn't tell you about so like share and subscribe 
Click the links in the description box to learn more about my business, Curated Legacy, LLC, and my coaching and consulting service. Join the Black and Invisible YouTube membership group and purchase my book on Amazon about being an invisible black woman. And as always, stay tuned for more videos.